Hello, in this video I'm showing you how you can transform your old radiators from looking like this to looking like this. So this is a radiator in my hallway, I sprayed it grey and it's got some sparkle. And this is a radiator in one of my bedrooms, I've just sprayed it plain gloss red. And finally I have two radiators on my landing, both sprayed with different types of sparkling paint and I'll explain the difference to you later in the video. Now I have been in hundreds of people's houses and I've seen radiators painted in all sorts of different paints and it's never a great look. But in this video I'm going to show you how you can transform your old radiator and we're going to spray this radiator and we're going to make it look as good as new and I'm going to add a little bit of extra something by adding a little bit of sparkle which makes the radiators just that little bit more fancy. Now you can try doing this job with the radiator radiator still hung on the wall but it's going to be very tricky to spray that radiator and not get any runs so the best thing to do is to take the radiator off the wall now if you don't know how to take a radiator off the wall of course you can watch my video you by clicking the link above or down in the description on how to remove your radiator for decorating and there's also some other great little tips on how to flush your radiators out but that is the best way that we're going to get a great finish take the radiator off the wall you can then lay it flat and we can spray it over and make sure we get no runs so we get that really nice clean look which we're looking for. Now I'm not painted with decorator in any shape or form but this is just a job which I did in my house when I was doing some decorating I decided to film it and I got some great results and I hope if you decide to do this you also get some great results. So the first part of this video is all about my hall radiator. There's a lot of chips on it, a lot of flaky paint on it and a lot more preparation involved in getting it ready for spraying. And then I'll go on to my landing radiator where this was a much new radiator there wasn't so much involved in getting it ready. I spray that one up and then I spray spray it in a different type of sparkle to another radiator which I sprayed some time ago and I'll explain the difference between those two sparkles and what you might expect if you decide to do this. And then we go back to the hall radiator where we have a slight change of heart and we decide to spray it with a different colour and of course I'll explain why in the video and I'll also give you some little tips which I've learned about spraying so that if you decide to do this you'll get some great results also. My name is Mark Ballard and I've been a gas registered engineer for over 20 years. The aim of my channel is to help you with your central heating and your plumbing. If you find this video helpful in any way, then please give me some feedback by clicking on that thumbs up and that will also help others to find the video. If you think this video is useful, then click on that subscribe. And if you want to receive a notification the next time I upload a help video, then click on that bell. And of course, share the video with your friends. And I'd like to say a really big thank you to everybody who's left a donation on a toolbox one. It's really appreciated and that'll help me to make more videos which will hopefully help you. Okay, right now let's get on with the video and see how we can spray up these radiators and make them look as good as new. All the links throughout this video can be found in the description below, at the end of the video or in the cards above. Now if after watching this video you decide that you are going to try spraying your radiators up then of course you can watch all my videos which are going to show you how to remove your radiator for decorating then how to flush your radiator out because you want to make sure your radiator is flushed out it's all nice and clean before you refit it and of course then how to refit your radiator so hopefully you'll then have a nice new fancy looking radiator in its place after you've done some decorating. The first thing you need to do is obviously drain the radiator out. Now I've already drained this radiator out, it's got no water in it and I've flushed it through so it's all nice and clean. So when I have finished spraying it, we can just hang it straight back on the wall and then we don't have to mess about with any dirty water. Then after you've done that, you're then going to need to remove these side panels. Now they all come off in all sorts of different ways. Some of them have screws in the back of them. Some of them just slip off. Some of them you, you've got these plastic clips like these and you've got to unclip those and take the panel off but either way you want to work out how to get the, the panel off and take it off so I can't really show you how to take these panels off because every single radiator is going to be different but we do want to try and get them off I've already moved this plastic clip and then this panel here then lifts away like this and then it just lifts off like that okay so that's one panel lifted off and then the top one obviously just lifts away and I've already removed the clip on this side so this one's going to do the same like that so that's that panel and then we've got the top panel here like that okay so that's my three panels taken off now you can also see with this radiator there is a little clip in the middle here to hold this front panel in so I'm just going to use a flat head screwdriver and just lift this or lever this little thing off okay they're usually quite tight because they've got special little grips on so they don't just come off there we go so that just comes off there and that just fits into there 
So now I've removed the panels and I need to sand this radius down. We need to get rid of all these flaky bits of paint here or any signs of rust. So it's a nice smooth finish. So when you spray the radius, uh, it's gonna be a nice clean finish. And the best way I find to do that is to use these flapper wheels. They fit in an electric drill like this. So hopefully you have an electric drill, just put them in there, do that up, and then we can just go over this and that'll sand it down really nice and quickly. Obviously, don't forget, make sure you wear a mask because you don't want to go breathing in all this dust. It's not very good for you. So wear a mask when you're doing this and then do it in a nice ventilated area. And that's how easy it is with these flapper wheels. So you can see I've finished sanding down the radiator now and that paint has come whizzing off with these flapper wheels. It's taken off all the flaky paint. You can see it's right down to the bare metal there, uh, which is absolutely fine because we're going to prime this over with some primer, which is uh, quite suitable for going over the metal. Now these flap wheels are great. They really whiz the paint off. And I bought a little pack of these. It's under a tenner. And I left the link in the description. Uh, they, they come as different grits and I think this one here, yeah, that's a 120. And then we've got this one here is an 80 grit. And uh, we've also got the roughest here, which was 40. And the 40 just whizzes the paint off. It literally just flies off, making the job really easy. So here's the back of the radiator. We're not going to bother spraying the back of the radiator because we're not going to see it. Um, but so we are going to see these uh, lugs here. So I am going to go over those with scotch bright pad to, uh, to key those in. And I've also got on along this top edge here. Uh, you can see I've just done some light sanding uh, so the paint just keys in across that top edge there. Now my radiator around the blanking plugs, it was a little bit rusty. So I've taken the blanking plugs out and I've uh, sanded down the uh, end of the radiator here. So uh, the, the paint's gonna key into there nicely. Now I've ordered some new blanking plugs and I left the link in the description. Uh, but if you wanna know how to repair your old blanking plugs, obviously you can watch my video on how to repair your old blanking plugs. And of course I've done the other end here as well. You can also see I've gone along the bottom edge there. I've sanded that down because that was a little bit rusty, a little bit flaky. So I sanded that down. Now we're not going to take out the tails for the radiators because they're in exactly the right place. So I, I don't want to uh, go changing those. So I'm just going to mask those off with some paper tape. So now I've finished sanding this all down and I'll put the tape around the end. So all I did just get some masking tape like this, just peel a bit off and then carefully wrap it around, making sure you get right up to the edge there. Just put that on there like that. And that'll ensure a nice finish on this edge here. Make sure you push that tape right in close there. And there we go. After you finish going over the radiator with the flap wheels, you then want to go over it with something a lot smoother. Now I use this stuff here called Scotch Bright. Now this stuff is really abrasive, but it leaves a really smooth finish. And we want the radiator to be nice and smooth before we do any spray in. Make sure you got rid of all those bursts, all those sharp edges, because using these uh, little wheels, they will actually make little sharp edges on the on the, the metal. So you want to just take all the, those off, just go over it with something nice and smooth, a nice smooth pad, and clean it all up like that. And again, I'm going to do this edge here as well. Make sure it's all nice and smooth. So all the rust spots, like, like a bit of rust spot there, that's all been sanded down. If I find another little bit again, maybe it's a little bit too rusty, I can just go over it a little bit more. Get rid of that bit of rust there. And just rub it down again. Oh, and now it's raining. But luckily I'm on the cover here, so it should be fine. And as per usual, it's preparation. Preparation is what makes it good. If you don't do a, do a good job now, then the end job is not gonna look good. As any painter or decorator will tell you, it's all about the preparation. The putting stuff on afterwards is then easy. It's getting this bit done. This is always the hard work. And to be honest, I hate decorating. I'm rubbing this down, trying to beat the clock before it goes dark and too cold. Because you don't want to do this, spray this when it's too cold. It's also not so good to do it when it's too hot either, because uh, um, you can just affect the spray a little, a little bit. Let's get brush it down. 
after I finish putting on the tape and sanding it all down, I'm then going to wipe it all over to get rid of all the dust. Now I'm using methylated spirits right now, but the best thing to use would be some tack cloths. They're special sticky cloths which are designed for wiping down surfaces after you've been sanding them down, before you do your painting. But basically you want to use something that's not going to leave a greasy film. All right, so here we are now. I finished rubbing it down. I finished going over it with the uh, methylate spirits. It's all nice and clean, ready for spraying. Now I thought I'd just to mention that uh, this radiator, this is something like a six by seven single panel. And you might be thinking, is it really worth doing all this rubbing down and, and spraying? Uh, because you can buy a radiator this size for, for, for relatively inexpensive. So it might be about 30 or 40 pounds and you can buy this, it's radiator. So you might think, is it really worth doing all this? Well, if you do decide to, to buy a new radiator instead then don't forget you are going to need to refit the radiator completely you are going to need to rehang the brackets on the walls because the brackets will not be the same don't think you can buy a new radiator and they're just going to hang on those same brackets you're going to have to completely fit the new brackets and of course you're going to need to line the pipes up you're going to need to refit banking plugs and refit the um uh, the radiator tails uh, so it is a whole job of refitting a radiator uh, but of course you can watch my video on how to refit a new radiator but um if you're doing a whole project where you've got a big house and you're doing lots of radiators then and you all if you're working to that, that budget then, then maybe doing it this way is, is much better because 30 pounds is a lot of money to some people so doing it this, this way and then we can spray it up and make it any color which we, we want because the paint we're going to use there are literally the colors are pretty much endless um, right so now let's get on with it and spray this radiator and change its color so now the radiator is all ready for spraying up. You're thinking, what paint are we going to use? Now you can go to your DIY store and there are loads and loads of different paints now for painting radiators, for spraying radiators, for protecting radiators. You'll see this, the list is it's endless. But at the end of the day, we just want a primer. We want to prime this this uh, this metal, this steel, and, and uh, protect it So with a, with a good paint. Now I just use your regular primer for your, for your cars. Uh, like this one's obviously comes from Holford's and uh, this is just a white primer. Uh, it shows it's gonna leave us with a, 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 a matte finish, which is kind of perfect for the for the next paint we're gonna put on top. Now you might be thinking, well, why use, use, use car uh, primer? Well, well, it's radiators are made of steel and cars are made out of steel. And this paint is specially designed to protect cars against the heat of the summer and the freezing cold of the winter. So you get, this paint is designed to to the last for all diff different sorts of extremes and so um, by painting radiator it protects it really really well so all you do is shake this up and we're going to spray that let's get this going and we'll, we'll see what it comes out like and i'm just going to give this a good old spray now obviously lay your radiator flat because by having it flat if you do get any runs coming off the edges they're just going to run down and they're going to stay flat you're not going to get the runs coming down your radiator so that's why we're putting it flat and that's why we want to take the radiator off if you hang it on the wall you can spray it but it is a lot more difficult spraying radiators uh, when they're hung up on a wall there's a lot more skill involved whereas this way pretty much anyone can, can do it Now you do want to let this dry for a bit because uh, when it dries, it'll go whiter because we still got some, some marks here. We can see through to the paint, but you really want to just leave it for a while. And then when the paint dries, it'll then go whiter and we won't see so many marks. And then we can just go over it again, wherever's needed. But just so you know, I've nearly used up this entire can now. So you, that's quite a, a big can. So you, you can see if you are going to do this, you, you are going to need to, a few cans of, of spray paint. Okay, so that's that can dead now. So uh, I do need to do some more spraying and of course we still have to spray these uh, side panels as well. So like I said to you earlier, it's pretty cold now because it's, uh, it's October now. So I'm gonna take this radiator back inside and I'm gonna let it uh, warm up and let the paint dry. And I'm gonna get some more paint uh, to go over it with, a, with another coat and then let's sand down at any spots which might need a little bit of extra uh, TLC on them. Um, yeah, so that's what I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna start on the other radiator. 
So this is the radiator which I sprayed at red. And it makes a really nice feature in the room. We're really happy with it. And uh, I did this about two years ago. Uh, it was a brand new radiator and I just uh, rubbed it down, primed it and I sprayed it with the red. And you can see we've got a nice finish on, on the front here. It's got a nice glossy finish. And then that's the result. And I'm really happy with that. And uh, yeah, we're still liking it. And it makes a really good feature in the room. So here we are, this is the second radiator. This radiator is in a lot better con condition. So I'm not need to do all that rubbing down on it. Uh, it's, it's almost like a, uh, not new, but it's, it's certainly in a lot better condition. No rust spots or flaky paint. So I'm just gonna rub this one down with this uh, material here. And we're gonna spray this from gray because it's gonna match the rest of the paintwork in the house and the new uh, wallpaper and everything, which is uh, um, uh, gray. So uh, I'll show you what it's like when I'm finished. So first of all, we've got to take these panels off so we can uh, so we get a nice finish on the edge here. So these panels come off slightly differently. They just pop off the edge like this. And get them off. There we go. And that one just unclips like that. Do the same on the other end. And these have got a little clip in there which hold them in place. Uh, and that's about the only bit apart from the clips on the back there. Now we've got to remove this. And of course, like the same as before, we want to just brush it all down, make sure it's clean. Maybe just, just wash it, or if you've got a jet wash or whatever, just get rid of all that old dust and dirt. Um, I must admit, these have been sat outside for a while because I've been waiting to do it. In this radiator, this one's in much better condition. You can see there's no flaky paint. So what I'm gonna do is just gonna rub this one down with just the scotch bright. So it's got a surface for, a, for the primer to key into. So that's this side all rubbed down. So I'm just gonna tape up these this time because the paint's in pretty good condition. There's a little bit of a chip there, but I'm not too worried about that. So just make sure you get right up to the edge there. Squash it in there with your nail. Okay. There we go. That one there. To the other end. That. Make sure we get it good and tight against the edge there. Once again, we can hear the rain coming down. And last one, just give that a bit of a clean. Oh, it's going a bit dark now as well. Oh, three o'clock, going dark. So there's our radiator done on this side. Again, we're not gonna worry about uh, doing anything with this side, we're not gonna spray it at all. So we're just gonna continue Rubbing this down, you can see there's no scratches on this one. Wow, it's getting pretty dark. Well, there we go, so I hope you can still see now because it's getting a bit dark. But I've now just sanded this one down with these uh, uh, scotch bright pads. Uh, this is almost uh, a, a nice finish. It's almost like a new radiator. So if you did have a new radiator, this would be the way to do it. Just rub it down like this. So your paint's gonna key in nicely. So again, I'm just gonna wipe this over now. Just get rid of any dust before I spray it. Just go over any spots which don't look quite right after cleaning. Wipe them off again. So just to recap, I've sanded this all down with this uh, Scotch-Brite. It's now um, 
got a slightly rougher surface to it so the uh, primer is going to key onto it. I then wiped it over with some methylated spirits to get rid of any dust and then now we're going to spray it with this primer, this grey primer and then when I finish doing that I'm then going to go over it with the shiny paint to give it that extra sparkle and a little bit different to uh, all the other radiators. And you can you can see it straight away because it's a dark primer. It goes over the white really quickly and it covers up all those uh, marks. So this won't take much paint to cover this. So I think that's looking pretty good already. You can see I've got this nicely sprayed up. There's not really marks on it. The white's not showing through. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's going well. We shouldn't need too much paint with this one. So this grey paint didn't take uh, very much to spray this radiator up. You can see it's now completely covered. It's a nice grey colour. We've still got plenty of paint left to do these side covers. And again, I'm going to do exactly the same thing again. I'm going to clean those up with a scotch bright and then they'll be ready for spraying up. The only problem with painting outside is sometimes you get little things flying around. Like for instance, here I've got a little fly that's gone in the paint. I can't do much about it. All I'm going to do is wait for it to dry and then it's going to sand that area down gently and just respray it over that again. But apart from that, it's, it's pretty much ready. Um, I know it looks a little bit dull, but uh, it, it does match the rest of the paintwork and it actually does look okay. So whilst I'm waiting for this to dry off, it's going to take a little while because it, it's cold. Um, I'm going to take these panels here and I'm just going to clean these, these off now. Uh, again, you can see all the, all the spiders' webs in, in here where they've been inside. So just going to clean this all off and get this ready for spraying also. So uh, I'm just going to get a brush first of all. Brush that all off. And we're going to get to our scotch bright and just clean all this. Give this a good old rough up. Okay, this is suitably dried now. So this, this although I'm sanding this, it's not going to stick it onto here. If it was at all wet, I, I wouldn't be doing this this here. Again, any spots which look a little bit strange or rough, just make sure you go over those, give them a good old rub down. It's got a little chip on it there. Now this is going to take a little while, a little bit fiddly, just to clean these little bits up, because uh, it's not only that it's it needs to be roughed up, but it's a little bit dirty, so. It needs to be cleaned to get rid of the dirt. Because this is going to sit like this, we need to sort of maybe do the inside here because we're going to look down through the radiator and you'll see this is whiteness here. So you want to just go over this as well because you want to make sure that it all looks okay or doesn't nothing stands out. That's been wrong, so I'm just sanding that down. Okay, so I now finished sanding this one here down. So this one's ready for spraying. We've got the two side panels here. One and two. I'm just going to do exactly the same with those. Make sure they're going to fit on there, that's it. So I'm just going to brush these off and then rub them down ready for spraying. Okay, that one's done. See all the dust inside there where they've been on the wall. So brush all that off. Okay, then we're going to get our scotch bright and I'm just going to rub these down. And that also helps clean off any dirt you've got on them, like that. Again, I'm not going to bother with the inside here because we're not going to see it, so there's no point in doing that. I'm just going to make sure that, that the edge is done so we're going to get a good finish and it's not going to flake off or anything crazy like that. There we go. And we might just see this back corner again, so we're just going to make sure that's done so that uh, we're not going to see any white when we look through the radiator. There we go, we can just brush this off again. Now I've finished sanding it, get rid of any of the, the excess dust from rubbing it down. So, Still got a bit of 
Athletic Spirits, just wipe off any dust that might still be on there. So you're going to get a good finish. Now, like I said before, the methylated spirits also act as a cleaner, so it's going to be cleaning off any grease or dirt. Not that you should have any grease or dirt on it after sanding it down, but it will do that anyway. Just this one. When I do these, I want to try and make sure I get them flat somehow. And uh, we don't want any runs on it, so I'm thinking putting some underneath here just to just to balance it there. Maybe I'll just use one of these flapper wheels. I mean, I'll just put that in there like that. And uh, that seems to be about the perfect size. So there we go, I'm just gonna use these flapper wheels. That just holds that in place, keeps that nice and flat. So again, hopefully we're not gonna get any runs. So I've got my spray here. Give that a good shake beforehand. Actually, what we'll do is move this to the front. So that way I can get a nice spray underneath here and get that nice and finished. And we'll just balance it on these flapper wheels here because that way I can keep it off the surface. Right. Get that underside there. There we go. To the top. Side. Now this one here. I'm a great one for using things around me. Not buying fancy tools, just using what's around. So I'm going to use that. So this is just spraying it so that if we look through the radiator, we're not going to see any white, so we can see the grey. Now, isn't that annoying? <laughs> Luckily, it had pretty much dried. Do let that dry for a little bit. Get this other one. Move this to one side. And there we go. Now this grey primer is drying pretty quickly, so I can see this is now touch dry. So I'll be able to just turn this over and just do that top edge there. I really don't want that to be touching here because that's going to leave some paint there. So I'm not sure I need to somehow need that to be a bit smaller. Now yeah, maybe we do it like that. Just do one half and then do the other half. Do that sideways like that, get those and do it the other way. Let's get those. And then we just want to do the back. So I'm happy with that. So now I'm just going to put that onto there carefully. Remove that one. And we can do the other side. So with the grey paint, I managed to spray the entire radiator and the side panels, and I've still got paint left over. Whereas the white primer, I need some more to uh, do the side panels and to just go over the radiator again uh, because it's, the dark is showing through. Okay, so it's now 24 hours later. This gray paint is all dry. It's been inside, so I know this is nice and hard now. And I'm now gonna spray it with the, with the other paint. Now, I'm gonna use this glitter spray, this, this one here. Now, this is because we're gonna keep this radiator gray, which is why I was happy to just to spray it in the gray primer. I'm just gonna go straight over the top of it with this, this paint here. And now, this is almost the same as doing it with a, with a lacquer. So a lacquer is like a clear varnish, but um, I, I'm gonna leave it the gray color and I'm gonna go straight over the top with this because it says about primer at first, but I've already primed it, so this is perfect. So now I'm just gonna spray this on, on top. And uh, I tried this other, other one also on one of my, my other radiators, slightly less glittery, um, but so we've gone for this more, hopefully this is gonna be even more glittery, but we're gonna find out. I'm not sure if it's gonna be a rough surface or a uh, smooth surface. I haven't used this one yet, so we're gonna find out what it's gonna be like. For the other radiator that you saw at the start of the video, I just used this bit of uh, red paint. So I just primed it like this uh, as before, 
and then I just went over it with this red red paint. And this is a Fiat Swift red because I wanted a nice deep red just to to make it look like almost like a glowing fire. But um, yeah, so it's um, that's what I, I used for that the other radiator. And that's like that was stuck two years ago, and the radiator's still fine. It still looks great, and uh, I'm, I'm really happy with it. And that's why I thought I'd make this this video. So I've shaken this can up. Okay, so this is all ready to be sprayed on. First of all, we're going to rub this down again. So we just rub it down with this uh, um, uh, with the Scotch Brite again, because all we need to do is just rough it up the surface so that this has got a good key for the uh, next layer of paint to bond to. So we're not going to go too crazy. We're just trying to just make the surface just a little bit rough. So you can see I'm just lightly rubbing it over the top of it. Okay, to get it nice and keyed in so the new paint can key it nicely. Okay, so this one's all prepared now. I just got to clean it off, brush it off to get rid of all the dust before I spray it with the sparkle. One of the reasons why I wipe it down is even though I've brushed this off like this, if I get my finger and I just go across it like that, I just get a fine bit of dust on there. So that's why you want to wipe it over because you need to remove all that fine dust so that you've got a best chance for your, uh, for your lacquer or your spray to bond onto the primer. So I want to let you know, initially I wiped it down with methylated spirits, but uh, that wasn't the thing to do because it left smeary marks on the paint. And so although it, it was getting dust off, it, it was also leaving smeary marks. So you don't want to use methylated spirits. You actually want to use something called tack cloths. Now tack cloths are basically sticky cloths and uh, you can get them from most DIY stores again. And uh, I'll leave a link in the description. And those are the correct things to use to remove that fine dust before you go painting or spraying. Okay, so here we go then. So this radius is now all prepared. I'm gonna spray this uh, glitter paint on, not use it before, so we're gonna find out what this is gonna look like. Okay, let's get going. First of all, get, get the lid off. Okay, so here we go. See how I'm moving all the time. I'm just trying to get the feel of this button. Okay, with this, so the, what I want to find out is this button, you need to really push it down quite a long way to get it to work. Yeah, it's quite sparkly. And I think also you just need to keep your distance a little bit more with this one. Okay, so I think that's looking pretty good. I don't know how well you can see it from there but there's definitely more sparkle in here. So I can see obviously the, the more you spray on, the more sparkle you get. Um, it's a nice glossy finish though. There's quite a lot of uh, lacquery stuff coming out with it. I think I need to do this area here just a tad bit more. Okay, so I think we are happy with that sparkle. I need to keep some of this. This is one can. I can feel this is definitely, it's got about two thirds of it gone now. Um, and obviously I need to spray up the side panels also. But I am pretty pleased with that. That's a quite a nice effect. I thought I'd just bring you in close to the radiator here. Uh, see if you can see the sparkle. So you can see this, uh, it is definitely sparkly. Um, and you can see that on there. I mean, just to compare, we have the gray panel over here. And obviously you can see completely the uh, difference between the, the two now. Um, yeah, there's some definite sparkle to that. And we've got this nice sheen on, on the top of it. 
So I think I'm pretty pleased with that. I think the wife is going to be very happy. So I thought I'd just bring you in close, see how close we can get. And we got quite a nice finish on the top of there. Now just to show you the, the difference, we come along here to our gray panel. Obviously that one there hasn't been sprayed and that's what it was like. And now it's like this. So yeah, I think that's, that's pretty good. I think that's the effect we're, we're going for. Um, it's kind of adds a bit of, from being white to, uh, sorry, from being gray to being a slightly white color, uh, obviously with, with the sparkle. Uh, so, so yeah. So I've tried two different sparkle paints and I've sprayed it onto this white side panel. This here is a super sparkle glitter and the other can is a glitter sparkling finish. Now it is difficult to see on this side panel, but this paint came out much thicker and the bits of sparkle are bigger, but it also leaves a slightly rough and dull finish. Whereas the glitter sparkling finish, it's a, a lot smoother uh, and it has a bit of a sheen to it. And the bits of sparkle are a bit finer, but from a distance, you can't really tell the difference in the size of the sparkle, but you can see there's a difference in the shine. So I think I prefer the glitter sparkling finish. Just so you see where I've sprayed it here, it's just run around the back, so it gives you a bit of an idea of uh, what it's coming out, out like. Um, so it's quite, quite thick spray. Whereas this other spray was definitely a, a bit thinner, comes out a bit slower. I guess it doesn't need to be coming out quite so fast because it's got the smaller sparkly bits in there. Now finished spraying it ends here. I can then take these bits of tape off like that. Give them a wiggle. Coming off quite as easy as I was expecting it to. There we go. There's one, take this one here off. there there we go this one here as well there we go that one and the last one down here along with a bit of kitchen roll in there okay so this ready is all ready now i'm just going to leave it to dry uh, give it a good 24 hours uh, to dry off before i put the panels on and I can put it back on the wall and we're going to see how it looks. Now here I am on the landing. The radiator on the floor is the one I've just sprayed with the super sparkle. The one on the wall here is sprayed with the glitter sparkling finish. Now the glitter sparkling finish has definitely got more of a gloss to it. You can see the shine there. Whereas the super sparkle, that's definitely a much duller and it's matte and it has got a rough surface to it. So I'm definitely not so keen on the super sparkle glitter, but I would definitely recommend the glitter sparkling finish. But we're really happy with both results because the wallpaper's got a little sparkle in it uh, and the rest of the paintwork you can see has got a gray finish to it also. And it adds something a little bit extra because you can't buy a radiator looking like this in the shops. So here's a gray radiator on the landing where it belongs and you can see the finish is way better than if I painted it. So I'm more than happy with that. It looks like a brand new radiator and it's got a nice little sparkle to it, makes a nice little feature. So yeah, we're happy with that. Now I'm back to the white radiator. The white radiator, um, although I sprayed it white, I wanna keep this radiator white and I'm gonna spray it with a sparkle also in the white, but uh, it didn't quite cover up all the all the marks underneath where the metal's showing through. If uh, this had been a much newer radiator, then I wouldn't have all these dark marks. So I've gotta go back over it again with some more primer. So I'm just gonna key it up first of all by just lightly sanding it down uh, or rubbing it down with the other, like I did on the other radiator and then it'll be ready for some more white primer. So I thought I'd just add that I am not a painter or a decorator, and this is definitely not the definitive way of doing it. I'm sure there are better ways of doing it. This is just a method which I decided to try doing it in my house, and I'm just passing this on to you. So if you decide to do this and you get great results like I have, then that's fantastic. I like DIY, and I like getting, uh, doing stuff for myself and seeing what I can achieve. And now I'm gonna spray this radiator up with some more white primer. Okay, so I thought I'd just add, I just realized that I haven't told you guys how to spray. Again, I'm no uh, spraying expert. This is just a method, method which I've worked out how to uh, spray myself. And basically you have to keep the can moving. Okay, so when you move, you move along, then you press spray and then you release spray, but otherwise you're still moving. If you push the button down, 
and then start moving you're going to get a big blob of paint and it's going to be too much so you have to be constantly moving the can backwards and forwards unless you just kind of maybe just do a tiny little bit somewhere but even then it's really hard to put a small amount on so you kind of have to be doing this action all the time and it takes a little while to get that but once you have also, you're not trying to get too much paint on. You don't want to have it too little because then you have a rough surface. So as you're doing it, you, you're looking to see that you, you have a, a layer of paint on there and you could get a little bit of shine, but you've got like a complete covering of, of, of paint. Um, so you, you don't want to be, be too dull. And if it hasn't got enough when you rub over it afterwards, if it's really rough when you're rubbing over it, you've not got enough paint on. Also, you don't want to put too much paint on because if you put too much paint on, then you may get crazing and bubbles in the finish. Okay, so this second coat is going on much better. It's pretty much hiding all the marks. There's a little mark there which I had to take out extra, so I'm gonna have to go over that again. So I'm not sure if you guys can tell. So I'm moving and pushing. So move, try and do it from here. And it's hard to do it. Move and push. Push off on 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 so i don't think see so there's a nice shine over that so i know i've got enough on there okay if i just go over it quickly mm, it's still shiny but it's it's not gonna be enough that bit And I'm probably closer than you want to be. It usually says about six inches, so we should be a little bit farther away, but I'm just going to be a bit closer. Okay, looking good. This is the second can I had to use because I'm using white. And I'm only using it white twice because I want the radiator to be white. So, and then I'm going to go over, over it with a sparkle and we're going to have a sparkly white radiator. The only reason why I've had to use extra paint on this radiator is because I, it was quite flaky. It had a lot of flaky, rusty paint on it. So I've had to strip it down to the bare metal. And so I had to go over it twice uh, to, to, to cover up all the marks. But if you've got a, a much new radiator, you could probably just go over it at once and then you'd be able to straight go over it with your, with your blingy paint. Okay, or any other color which you choose to use. Because obviously, uh, if you have a much lighter color, then you want to go for the for white uh, undercoat. If you have a, a much darker color, then you can go for the gray. But again, I'm no expert, so um, I'm just making this up as, as I go along and I've got great results and I'm hoping you'll be able to get great results as well. So I've just finished spraying out the side panels for the whole radiator with this white primer. I've still got a little paint left, so um, that is two cans I've had to use on that. So just bear in mind, these are about eight pounds each. Um, so, you know, that's 16 pounds already and we still have to put the lacquer on. So just so you give you an idea of what, of what you're likely to be spending, uh, that's if you're doing it white. I mean, obviously if you want to do it another color, then you've got whatever these cans will, will cost um, also. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's all looking good. And uh, I'm just going to let this dry now. And um, I think we'll come back tomorrow to finish it off. So, uh, so this is the white radiator, which I was going to put in the hallway. Now we've had a slight change of, of heart now because we've sprayed this with a, with, a, with a small silver paint. I've only done it halfway, I haven't done the bottom yet because uh, after spraying it, we just noticed that it actually, uh, the silver on the white makes the radiator look like a, a bit of a dirty white. And, I, and we didn't really like that. So we're going to change this, this look. That's why I haven't got the side panels on. We're going to change this and we're going to spray this gray to match the gray here and, and the gray in the, in the wallpaper. So just a quick word about why I've used the old radiator. Now, whenever you get a new radiator, they come with their own brackets and they pretty much never line up with the old brackets. So I'd have to take these old brackets off and you can see these old brackets are set in behind these wooden panels. That would mean I then have to cut away the wooden panel. I then got to remove the bracket. I then got to cut another hole to put the new bracket on. I then have to drill some holes in the wall and then fit that bracket. I then have to try and line it up with these pipes here and the, the, the brackets might be slightly different so this might be in a slightly different position, which then might mean I then have to do some more soldering. So you can see there's a whole bunch of flap which is involved if I want to change the radiator. But that is the reason why I've stuck to the old radiator. It's going to fit on here perfectly. I've sprayed it all up. It looks as good as new. So that's the reason why I've kept the old radiator. 
So now I've got to start all over again, so I'm rubbing this radiator down and roughing up all the outside with the scotch bright to make the surface rough so the new paint will key in well. Then after I've gone over the whole radiator with the scotch bright, I then brush it all down, then wipe it over to remove any dust before I do the spraying. Now I give the can a good old shake and then start spraying it with the grey paint. You can see it goes on pretty well, it covers up all the marks in one go, so you pretty much only need to spray a radiator just once with the grey paint. And you can see now as I start going backwards and forwards, it makes a really nice easy finish. There we go, back and forwards, backwards and forwards, and there you go. It doesn't take long to go over this radiator with a grey primer. Then I've got to repeat the process on these side panels. So I'll sand those down and then I'm going to wipe them off and then I'm going to spray them over with the grey primer. So I've now finished spraying everything with the grey primer and now I've got to go over it all again with the scotch bright just to rough the surface up so that when I spray on the sparkle paint it's going to key in well and we're going to get a good finish and it's going to last a long time and not flake off. Then I'm going to brush it all down again and then wipe it all over with a tack cloth to remove all that fine dust so the spray is going to key in there nicely and we're going to get a great finish. Now I've finished preparing this radiator, now we're going to spray over it with the sparkly stuff. So on this radiator I'm using a Rust Oleum's Glitter Sparkling Finish. So I thought I'd let you know that Rust Oleum has a huge range of sprays and paints. So you can get this in gold and obviously in the silver and they do lots of other paints like the primers and all sorts of colours and I've left the link in the description. So now I've started spraying the whole radiator with the sparkle finish and this is basically just a lacquer with some glitter in it and it makes a really good finish making it your own personal bespoke radiator and completely different to any other radiator you could buy. So just finished spraying this with the sparkle paint, I'm going to let this dry and then I'm going to go over it with one more coat just to add a little bit more sparkle to it and I've got to do the sides and the top and then hopefully that should be enough paint and then we'll get it hung on the wall and see how it looks. So this is the first side panel and I'm giving it its first coat of sparkle. Then I've got the second side panel. And finally giving the top panel a good coat of sparkly finish. And there we are, so now I've got the whole radiator sprayed, I've got the top panels, two sides sprayed, and I've still got enough. I'm gonna go over this with one more time, and then we should be all good to go. So like I just said, I've sprayed this radiator with one layer of sparkle paint. I'm now gonna go over it again with the scotch bright just to key the surface up, then wipe it over with a tack cloth to remove all that dust so the paint really keys in well. And then I'll spray over it again with that second coat of sparkle finish. And the second coat will give it a much deeper luster, making the overall finish even better. So now I'm just wiping the radiator off. Now I'm going over it with the second coat of sparkle finish. And then the second coat of sparkle for panel number one. Then the second coat for panel number two. Then finally the second coat for the top panel with some sparkly finish. So that's it, this one's finished now. I've sprayed it twice now with the sparkly paint. I'm gonna let it all dry, give it a good uh, 24 hours. I'm gonna uh, hang it on the wall and uh, plumb it all in. And uh, yeah, let's see how it looks. So here we are, this one whole razor, which is all finished now. This was one which had all the flaky paint and the chips all over it and I had to sand it right down to the bare metal. Okay, so now I've sprayed it with the gray and I've sprayed it with the sparkle. We're really happy with the finish. And I hope if you decide to do this, you also get a great finish and you're really happy with it. 
Right, that's about it then. So I do hope my video has been helpful to you. If you want to watch my next video, then you can click on the link just here. And if you found my video helpful in any way, then please give me that little bit of feedback by clicking on that thumbs up. And like I said, that will help others to find your video. And if you enjoyed the video, then you can click on subscribe. And if you want to receive a notification the next time I upload a help video, then click on that bell. And of course, share the video with your friends. And if you want to buy me a cup of coffee, I'd like to say a really big thank you to everybody who's left a donation in my toolbox fund. It's really appreciated and it helped me to make more videos, which will hopefully help you. Bye for now, and I'll see you next time.